Bodhidharma was a Buddhist monk who lived during the 5th or 6th century. He is traditionally credited as the transmitter of Chan Buddhism to China, and regarded as its first Chinese patriarch. According to Chinese legend, he also began the physical training of the monks of Shaolin Monastery that led to the creation of Shaolin Kung Fu. In Japan, he is known as Daruma. Little contemporary biographical information on Bodhidharma is extant, and subsequent accounts became layered with legend and unreliable details. According to the principal Chinese sources, Bodhidharma came from the Western regions, which refers to Central Asia but may also include the Indian subcontinent, and was either a Persian Central Asian or a South Indian. The third son of a great Indian king. Throughout Buddhist art, Bodhidharma is depicted as an ill tempered, profusely bearded, wide eyed non Chinese person. He is referred as the blue eyed barbarian. Chinese, by Yan Hu Pinyin, Bianu in Chan texts. Aside from the Chinese accounts, several popular traditions also exist regarding Bodhidharma's origins. The accounts also differ on the date of his arrival, with one early account claiming that he arrived during the Lu Song dynasty, 420 to 479, and later accounts dating his arrival to the Liang dynasty, 500. 2-557. Bodhidharma was primarily active in the territory of the Northern Way 386-634. Modern scholarship dates him to about the early 5th century. Bodhidharma's teachings and practice centered on meditation and the Lankavatara Sutra. The anthology of the Patriarchal Hall 952 identifies Bodhidharma as the 28th Patriarch of Buddhism in an uninterrupted line that extends all the way back to the Gautama Buddha himself. Biography <inaudible> 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 Topic: Principal sources. There are two known extant accounts written by contemporaries of Bodhidharma. According to these sources, Bodhidharma came from the western regions and was either a Persian Central Asian or a South Indian, the third son of a great Indian king. Later sources draw on these two sources, adding additional details, including a change to being descendant from a Brahmin king, which accords with the reign of the Pallavas, who claim ed to belong to a Brahmin lineage. The Western Regions was a historical name specified in the Chinese chronicles between the 3rd century BC to the 8th century AD that referred to the regions west of Yuman Pass, most often Central Asia or sometimes more specifically the easternmost portion of it e.g. Alta Shah or the Tarim Basin in southern Xinjiang. Sometimes it was used more generally to refer to other regions to the west of China as well, such as the Indian subcontinent as in the novel Journey to the West. The record of the Buddhist monasteries of Luoyang The earliest text mentioning Bodhidharma is the record of the Buddhist monasteries of Luoyang Chinese, Luoyang Jialongji Luoyang Kielongji, which was compiled in 547 by Yang Shuangji, Yang Xuanji a writer and translator of Mahayana sutras into Chinese. Yang gave the following account. At that time there was a monk of the western region named Bodhidharma, a Persian Central Asian. He travelled from the wild borderlands to China. 
Seeing the golden disks on the pole on top of Yongying's stupa reflecting in the sun, the rays of light illuminating the surface of the clouds, the jewel bells on the stupa blowing in the wind, the echoes reverberating beyond the heavens, he sang its praises. He exclaimed, "'Truly this is the work of spirits!' He said, I am 150 years old, and I have passed through numerous countries. There is virtually no country I have not visited. Even the distant Buddha realms lack this." He chanted homage and placed his palms together in salutation for days on end. Tanlin, preface to the two entrances and four acts The second account was written by Tanlin, Tornlin 506–574. Tanlin's brief biography of the Dharma Master is found in his preface to the long scroll of the treatise on the two entrances and four practices, a text traditionally attributed to Bodhi Dharma and the first text to identify him as South Indian. The Dharma master was a South Indian of the Western region. He was the third son of a great Indian king. His ambition lay in the Mahayana path, and so he put aside his white layman's robe for the black robe of a monk, lamenting the decline of the true teaching in the outlands. He subsequently crossed distant mountains and seas, traveling about propagating the teaching in Han and Wei. Tanin's account was the first to mention that Bodhidharma attracted disciples, specifically mentioning Daoyu Dao and Dazu Huike, Huike the latter of whom would later figure very prominently in the Bodhidharma literature. Although Tanlin has traditionally been considered a disciple of Bodhidharma, it is more likely that he was a student of Huike. Chronicle of the Lankavatara Masters Tanlin's preface has also been preserved in Jingju's 683-750 Lengji Shizi Ji, Chronicle of the Lankavatara Masters which dates from 713 to 716, ca. 715 he writes, The teacher of the Dharma, who came from South India in the western regions, the third son of a great Brahmin king. <laughs> Further biographies of eminent monks In the 7th century historical work, Further Biographies of Eminent Monks, Zhu Gao Seng Chuan Zhu Gao Sung Zhuan, Dao Xuan, Dao Xuan 596 667, possibly drew on Tanlin's preface as a basic source, but made several significant additions. Firstly, Dao Xuan adds more detail concerning Bodhidharma's origins, writing that he was of South Indian Brahmin stock. Nan Tianzhu Po Luomen Jung Nan Tianzhu Poluomen Jung. Secondly, more detail is provided concerning Bodhidharma's journeys. Tanlin's original is imprecise about Bodhidharma's travels, saying only that he crossed distant mountains and seas", before arriving in Wei. Daoxuan's account, however, implies a specific itinerary. He first arrived at Nan Yu during the Sung period. From there he turned north and came to the kingdom of Wei. This implies that Bodhidharma had traveled to China by sea and that he had crossed over the Yangtze. Thirdly, Daoxuan suggests a date for Bodhidharma's arrival in China. 
He writes that Bodhidharma makes landfall in the time of the song, thus making his arrival no later than the time of the song's fall to the southern Qi in 479. Finally, Daoxuan provides information concerning Bodhidharma's death. Bodhidharma, he writes, died at the banks of the Luo River, where he was interred by his disciple Dazu Huike, possibly in a cave. According to Daoxuan's chronology, Bodhidharma's death must have occurred prior to 534, the date of the Northern Way's fall, because Dazu Huike subsequently leaves Luoyang for Yi. Furthermore, citing the shore of the Luo River as the place of death might possibly suggest that Bodhidharma died in the mass executions at Heian in 528. Supporting this possibility is a report in the Chinese Buddhist canon stating that a Buddhist monk was among the victims at Hewian. Topic: <laughs> Later accounts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Anthology of the Patriarchal Hall. In the anthology of the Patriarchal Hall of 952, the elements of the traditional Bodhidharma story are in place. Bodhidharma is said to have been a disciple of Prajnatara, thus establishing the latter as the 27th Patriarch in India. After a three-year journey, Bodhidharma reached China in 527, during the Liang as opposed to the Song in Daoxuan's text. The anthology of the Patriarchal Hall includes Bodhidharma's encounter with Emperor Wu of Liang, which was first recorded around 758 in the appendix to a text by Shen Wei, Shen Hui, a disciple of Hurung. Finally, as opposed to Daoxuan's figure of over 180 years. The anthology of the Patriarchal Hall states that Bodhidharma died at the age of 150. He was then buried on Mount Shung'er to the west of Luoyang. However, three years after the burial, in the Pamir Mountains, Songyun Songyun, an official of one of the later Wei kingdoms, encountered Bodhidharma, who claimed to be returning to India and was carrying a single sandal. Bodhidharma predicted the death of Songyun's ruler, a prediction which was borne out upon the latter's return. Bodhidharma's tomb was then opened, and only a single sandal was found inside. According to the anthology of the Patriarchal Hall, Bodhidharma left the Liang court in 527 and relocated to Mount Song near Luoyang and the Shaolin Monastery, where he "...faced a wall for nine years, not speaking for the entire time." His date of death can have been no earlier than 536. Moreover, his encounter with the Wei official indicates a date of death no later than 554, three years before the fall of the Western Wei. <laughs> Dao Yuan, transmission of the lamp Subsequent to the anthology of the Patriarchal Hall, the only dated addition to the biography of Bodhidharma is in the Jingde records of the transmission of the lamp Jingde Chuandeng Lu Jingde Chuandeng Lu, published 1004 CE, by Dao Yuan, Dao Yuan in which it is stated that Bodhidharma's original name had been Bodhitara but was changed by his master Prajnatara. The same account is given by the Japanese master Kaizen's 13th century work of the same title. <laughs> Popular traditions Several contemporary popular traditions also exist regarding Bodhidharma's origins. 
An Indian tradition regards Bodhidharma to be the third son of a Pallava king from Kanchipuram. This is consistent with the Southeast Asian traditions which also describe Bodhidharma as a former South Indian Tamil prince who had awakened his kundalini and renounced royal life to become a monk. The Tibetan version similarly characterizes him as a dark-skinned Siddha from South India. Conversely, the Japanese tradition generally regards Bodhidharma as Persian. Legends about Bodhidharma Several stories about Bodhidharma have become popular legends, which are still being used in the Chan, Seon and Zen tradition. <laughs> Encounter with Emperor Seo Yan Seo Yan The anthology of the Patriarchal Hall says that in 527, Bodhidharma visited Emperor Wu of Liang Xio Yan Xio Yan, posthumous name Wudi Wudai, a fervent patron of Buddhism. This encounter was included as the first koan of the Blue Cliff Record. Nine years of wall gazing Failing to make a favorable impression in South China, Bodhidharma is said to have traveled to the Shaolin Monastery. After either being refused entry or being ejected after a short time, he lived in a nearby cave, where he "...faced a wall for nine years, not speaking for the entire time." The biographical tradition is littered with apocryphal tales about Bodhidharma's life and circumstances. In one version of the story, he is said to have fallen asleep seven years into his nine years of wall gazing. Becoming angry with himself, he cut off his eyelids to prevent it from happening again. According to the legend, as his eyelids hit the floor the first tea plants sprang up, and thereafter tea would provide a stimulant to help keep students of Chan awake during Zazen. The most popular account relates that Bodhidharma was admitted into the Shaolin Temple after nine years in the cave and taught there for some time. However, other versions report that he passed away, seated upright or that he disappeared, leaving behind the Yijin Jing, or that his legs atrophied after nine years of sitting, which is why Daruma dolls have no legs. <laughs> Huike cuts off his arm In one legend, Bodhidharma refused to resume teaching until his would-be student, Dazu Huike, who had kept vigil for weeks in the deep snow outside of the monastery, cut off his own left arm to demonstrate sincerity. <laughs> Transmission Topic: Skin, flesh, bone, marrow. Jingdei records of the transmission of the lamp Jingdei Chuandeng Lu Jingdei Chuandeng Lu of Daoyuan Daoyuan, presented to the emperor in 1004, records that Bodhidharma wished to return to India and called together his disciples. Bodhidharma passed on the symbolic robe and bowl of Dharma succession to Dazu Huike and, some texts claim, a copy of the Lankavatara Sutra. Bodhidharma then either returned to India or died. <laughs> Bodhidharma at Shaolin 
Some Chinese myths and legends describe Bodhidharma as being disturbed by the poor physical shape of the Shaolin monks, after which he instructed them in techniques to maintain their physical condition as well as teaching meditation. He is said to have taught a series of external exercises called the 18 Arhat Hands and an internal practice called the Sinew Metamorphosis Classic. In addition, after his departure from the temple, two manuscripts by Bodhidharma were said to be discovered inside the temple, the Yijin Jing and the Zisui Jing. Copies and translations of the Yijin Jing survive to the modern day. The Zisui Jing has been lost. Topic: <laughs> Travels in Southeast Asia. According to Southeast Asian folklore, Bodhidharma travelled from Jambudvipa by sea to Palembang, Indonesia. Passing through Sumatra, Java, Bali, and Malaysia, he eventually entered China through Nanyu. In his travels through the region, Bodhidharma is said to have transmitted his knowledge of the Mahayana doctrine and the martial arts. Malay legend holds that he introduced forms to Salat. Vajrayana tradition links Bodhidharma with the 11th century South Indian monk Dampa Sangye, who travelled extensively to Tibet and China spreading tantric teachings. <laughs> <laughs> Appearance after his death Three years after Bodhidharma's death, Ambassador Songyun of Northern Wei is said to have seen him walking while holding a shoe at the Pamir Heights. Songyun asked Bodhidharma where he was going, to which Bodhidharma replied, I am going home. When asked why he was holding his shoe, Bodhidharma answered, You will know when you reach Shaolin Monastery. Don't mention that you saw me or you will meet with disaster. After arriving at the palace, Songyun told the emperor that he met Bodhidharma on the way. The emperor said Bodhidharma was already dead and buried and had Songyun arrested for lying. At Shaolin Monastery, the monks informed them that Bodhidharma was dead and had been buried in a hill behind the temple. The grave was exhumed and was found to contain a single shoe. The monks then said, Master has gone back home, and prostrated three times. For nine years he had remained and nobody knew him. Carrying a shoe in hand, he went home quietly, without ceremony. <laughs> Practice and teaching Bodhidharma is traditionally seen as introducing dhyana practice in China. Topic: <inaudible> Pointing directly to one's mind. One of the fundamental Chon texts attributed to Bodhidharma is a four-line stanza whose first two verses echo the Lankavatara Sutra's disdain for words and whose second two verses stress the importance of the insight into reality achieved through self-realization. The stanza, in fact, is not Bodhidharma's, but rather dates to the year 1108. Topic: Wall gazing. Tanlin, in the preface to Two Entrances and Four Acts, and Daoxuan, in the further biographies of eminent monks, mention a practice of Bodhidharma's termed wall gazing. By Guan Biguan, both Tanlin and Daoxuan associate this wall gazing with quieting the mind. Chinese, and Sin Pinyin, Anxan. In the two entrances and four acts, traditionally attributed to Bodhidharma, the term, 
wall gazing is given as follows, those who turn from delusion back to reality, who meditate on walls, the absence of self and other, the oneness of mortal and sage, and who remain unmoved even by scriptures are in complete and unspoken agreement with reason." Daoxuan states the merits of Mahayana wall gazing are the highest, these are the first mentions in the historical record of what may be a type of meditation being ascribed to Bodhidharma. Exactly what sort of practice Bodhidharma's wall gazing was remains uncertain. Nearly all accounts have treated it either as an undefined variety of meditation, as Daoxuan and Dumulan, or as a variety of seated meditation akin to the Zazen Chinese, Zaochuan Pinyin, Zuochuan that later became a defining characteristic of Chan. The latter interpretation is particularly common among those working from a Chan standpoint. There have also, however, been interpretations of wall gazing as a non meditative phenomenon. <laughs> the Lankavatara Sutra There are early texts which explicitly associate Bodhidharma with the Lankavatara Sutra. Daoxuan, for example, in a late recension of his biography of Bodhidharma's successor Huike, has the sutra as a basic and important element of the teachings passed down by Bodhidharma. In the beginning Dhyana Master Bodhidharma took the four-role Lanka Sutra, handed it over to Huike, and said, "...when I examine the land of China, it is clear that there is only this sutra. If you rely on it to practice, you will be able to cross over the world." Another early text, the "...record of the masters and disciples of the Lankavatara Sutra." Chinese, Ling Jia Shizi Ji Pinyin, Ling Che Shizi Ji of Jingjue, Jingjue 683-750, also mentions Bodhidharma in relation to this text. Jingju's account also makes explicit mention of sitting meditation or zazen. For all those who sat in meditation, Master Bodhi Dharma also offered expositions of the main portions of the Lankavatara Sutra, which are collected in a volume of 12 or 13 pages, bearing the title of Teaching of Bodhi Dharma. In other early texts, the school that would later become known as Chan Buddhism is sometimes referred to as the Lankavatara School. Ling Jiazong Ling Che Zong, the Lankavatara Sutra, one of the Mahayana Sutras, is a highly difficult and obscure text whose basic thrust is to emphasize the inner enlightenment that does away with all duality and is raised above all distinctions. It is among the first and most important texts for East Asian Yogacara. One of the recurrent emphases in the Lankavatara Sutra is a lack of reliance on words to effectively express reality. If, Mahamati, you say that because of the reality of words the objects are, this talk lacks in sense. Words are not known in all the Buddha lands, words, Mahamati, are an artificial creation. In some Buddha lands ideas are indicated by looking steadily, in others by gestures, in still others by a frown, by the movement of the eyes, by laughing, by yawning, or by the clearing of the throat, or by recollection, or by trembling. In contrast to the ineffectiveness of words, the sutra instead stresses the importance of the self-realization, that is, attained by noble wisdom", and occurs, "...when one has an insight into reality as it is. The truth is the state of self-realization and is beyond categories of discrimination." 
The sutra goes on to outline the ultimate effects of an experience of self-realization. The bodhisattva will become thoroughly conversant with the noble truth of self-realization, will become a perfect master of his own mind, will conduct himself without effort, will be like a gem reflecting a variety of colors, will be able to assume the body of transformation, will be able to enter into the subtle minds of all beings, and, because of his firm belief in the truth of mind only, will, by gradually ascending the stages, become established in Buddhahood. Lineage Construction of lineages The idea of a patriarchal lineage in Chan dates back to the epitaph for Faru, Faru 638 a disciple of the fifth patriarch Hongren, Hongren 601 in the long scroll of the treatise on the two entrances and four practices and the continued biographies of eminent monks, Daoyu and Dazu Huike are the only explicitly identified disciples of Bodhidharma. The epitaph gives a line of descent identifying Bodhidharma as the first patriarch. In the 6th century, biographies of famous monks were collected. From this genre the typical Chan lineage was developed. These famous biographies were non-sectarian. The Chan biographical works, however, aimed to establish Chan as a legitimate school of Buddhism traceable to its Indian origins, and at the same time championed a particular form of Chan. Historical accuracy was of little concern to the compilers, old legends were repeated, new stories were invented and reiterated until they too became legends. D. T. Suzuki contends that Chan's growth in popularity during the 7th and 8th centuries attracted criticism that it had no authorized records of its direct transmission from the founder of Buddhism and that Chan historians made Bodhidharma the 28th Patriarch of Buddhism in response to such attacks. Six Patriarchs The earliest lineages described the lineage from Bodhidharma into the 5th to 7th generation of Patriarchs. Various records of different authors are known, which give a variation of transmission lines. Topic: <inaudible> Continuous lineage from Gautama Buddha. Eventually, these descriptions of the lineage evolved into a continuous lineage from Sakyamuni Buddha to Bodhidharma. The idea of a line of descent from Sakyamuni Buddha is the basis for the distinctive lineage tradition of Chan Buddhism. According to the Song of Enlightenment by Yongjia Zhuanjue (665–713), one of the chief disciples of Hurenji was Bodhidharma, the 28th patriarch of Buddhism in a line of descent from Gautama Buddha via his disciple Mahakasyapa. The transmission of the light gives 28 patriarchs in this transmission. Topic: Modern scholarship. Bodhidharma has been the subject of critical scientific research, which has shed new light on the traditional stories about Bodhidharma. Topic: Biography as a hagiographic process. 
According to John McRae, Bodhidharma has been the subject of a hagiographic process which served the needs of Chan Buddhism. According to him it is not possible to write an accurate biography of Bodhidharma It is ultimately impossible to reconstruct any original or accurate biography of the man whose life serves as the original trace of his hagiography, where trace is a term from Jacques Derrida meaning the beginningless beginning of a phenomenon, the imagined but always intellectually unattainable origin. Hence any such attempt by modern biographers to reconstruct a definitive account of Bodhidharma's life is both doomed to failure and potentially no different in intent from the hagiographical efforts of premodern writers. McRae's standpoint accords with Yanagida's standpoint. Yanagida ascribes great historical value to the witness of the disciple Tian Lin, but at the same time acknowledges the presence of many puzzles in the biography of Bodhidharma. Given the present state of the sources, he considers it impossible to compile a reliable account of Bodhidharma's life. Several scholars have suggested that the composed image of Bodhidharma depended on the combination of supposed historical information on various historical figures over several centuries. Bodhidharma as a historical person may even never have actually existed. Topic. Origins and place of birth Dumoulin comments on the three principal sources. The Persian heritage is doubtful, according to Dumoulin. In the description of the Lo Yang temple, Bodhidharma is called a Persian. Given the ambiguity of geographical references in writings of this period, such a statement should not be taken too seriously." Dumoulin considers Tan Lin's account of Bodhidharma being, "...the third son of a great Brahmin king," to be a later addition, and finds the exact meaning of, "...South Indian Brahmin stock," unclear and when Tao Xuan speaks of origins from South Indian Brahmin stock, it is not clear whether he is referring to roots in nobility or to India in general as the land of the Brahmins." These Chinese sources lend themselves to make inferences about Bodhidharma's origins. The third son of a Brahmin king has been speculated to mean the third son of a Pallavine king. Based on a specific pronunciation of the Chinese characters Xiangzi as Kangzi, meaning fragrance extreme. Tutomu Kambe identifies Xiangzi to be Kanchapuram, an old capital town in the state Tamil Nadu, India. According to Tutomu Kambe, Kanchi means a radiant jewel or a luxury belt with jewels, and Puram means a town or a state in the sense of earlier times. Thus, it is understood that the Xiangzi Kingdom corresponds to the old capital Kanchapuram. Acharya Raghu, in his work Bodhidharma Retold, used a combination of multiple factors to identify Bodhidharma from the state of Andhra Pradesh in South India, specifically to the geography around Mount Salem or modern-day Srisalem. The Pakistani scholar Ahmad Hassan Dani speculated that according to popular accounts in Pakistan's northwest, Bodhidharma may be from the region around the Peshawar Valley, or possibly around modern Afghanistan's eastern border with Pakistan. Caste <laughs> 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 In the context of the Indian caste system the mention of ''Brahman king'' acquires a nuance. Broughton notes that ''king'' 
implies that Bodhidharma was of a member of the royal caste, and Kayastha caste of warriors and rulers. Brahman is, in Western contexts, easily understood as Brahmana or Brahman, which means priest. Name According to tradition Bodhidharma was given this name by his teacher known variously as Panyatara, Prajnatara, or Prajnadara. His name prior to monkhood is said to be Jayavaman. Bodhidharma is associated with several other names, and is also known by the name Bodhatara. Foray notes that Bodhidharma's name appears sometimes truncated as Bodhi, or more often as Dharma In the first case, it may be confused with another of his rivals, Bodhiruchi. Tibetan sources give his name as Bodhidharmatara or Dharmatara, that is, highest teaching Dharma of enlightenment. Topic: <inaudible> Abode in China. Buswell dates Bodhidharma abode in China approximately at the early 5th century. Broughton dates Bodhidharma's presence in Luoyang to between 516 and 526, when the temple referred to Yongningxi, Yongningjixi was at the height of its glory. Starting in 526, Yongningxi suffered damage from a series of events, ultimately leading to its destruction in 534. Shaolin boxing Traditionally Bodhidharma is credited as founder of the martial arts at the Shaolin Temple. However, martial arts historians have shown this legend stems from a 17th-century Qigong manual known as the Yijin Jing. The preface of this work says that Bodhidharma left behind the Yi Jin Jing, from which the monks obtained the fighting skills which made them gain some fame. The authenticity of the Yi Jin Jing has been discredited by some historians, including Tang Hao, Zhu Zhen, and Matsuda Ryuchi. According to Lin Boyuan, this manuscript is full of errors, absurdities and fantastic claims, it cannot be taken as a legitimate source." The oldest available copy was published in 1827. The composition of the text itself has been dated to 1624. Even then, the association of Bodhidharma with martial arts only became widespread as a result of the 1904–1907 serialization of the novel The Travels of Lao San in Illustrated Fiction magazine. According to Henning, the "...story is clearly a 20th-century invention." which is confirmed by writings going back at least 250 years earlier, which mention both Bodhidharma and martial arts but make no connection between the two. <laughs> <laughs> Works attributed to Bodhidharma Two entrances and four practices a Rusi Zing Lun The Bloodstream Sermon Zhu Mai Lun Dharma Teaching of Pacifying the Mind and Sin Fa Men Treatise on Realizing the Nature Wu Zing Lun Bodhidharma Treatise Do Mo Lun Refuting Signs Treatise Po Xiang Lun aka Contemplation of Mind Treatise Guan Xin Lun Two Types of Entrance Er Jung Ru Topic. See also Chinese Buddhism Silk Road Transmission of Buddhism 
Buddhism amongst Tamils Kanchapuram Why has Bodhi Dharma left for the East? Seven AUM Arivu equals equals notes <laughs>